Father's Pizza. What are you waiting for? And now, Channel 2 News with John Larson and Maria Downey, John Hernandez with sports, and David Celeste with the weather. Good evening. The news most cities in Alaska have been anxiously waiting for came from Governor Sheffield today. The state will only pick up the tab for one-third of all capital project costs. That means many cities will have to find the rest of the money somewhere else. More on the story from Jerry DeHogue. One more the news came at a press conference this morning. The state is cutting capital project funds by two-thirds. That means the state will save $230 million, a big chunk of the $900 million budget shortfall. State officials say it would take a miracle for cities to get any more state money this year. Some combination of occurrences or events that make the revenue picture brighter. And that could be uh, the legislature in regular session passing a series of measures that provide other sources of income that make the problem go away. It could be a change in the price of oil upward. So none of Anchorage's capital projects were cut, but at this time city officials aren't sure which of the 67 projects they'll go ahead with. We're still going through our same analysis the state is, our final cash flow analysis on our projects. And s most importantly, uh, Mr. Hogan said today that uh, he said there's a real effort being made to give communities some flexibility on their major projects. The flexibility comes in if the city can lump state money from several projects together for one big project, like a Klutna. Budget officials will let the cities know what they can and can't do in the next few days. Jerry DeHoe, Channel 2 News. 1,300 state jobs are in jeopardy. That today from Bob Miller, the communications director for the governor. Last night, members of Alaska's largest union said no to a 10% pay cut. The governor had asked state employees to take a cut as a way to help make up the $900 million budget shortfall. Now the governor has to look at other alternatives, which include massive layoffs. If 1,300 workers are fired, the state would save about $80 million. Meanwhile, the Anchorage School District is proposing $10.5 million in budget cuts, but there are still several million more to go. They say over $17 million will have to be cut because of the 10% drop in school aid from the state. Over 140 positions will be eliminated. About half of those are already vacant, so about 70 people so far will lose their jobs. Food service, transportation, uh, instruction, uh, support areas, administration, and uh, these are actual areas probably in the supplies areas, uh, equipment areas. We have looked at some people. Uh, any contracted service we're looking at uh, trying to eliminate. The school board has yet to vote on these budget cuts. They'll also be looking at other areas for savings, like after school activities, student transportation, and an increase in the teacher-to-student ratio. The drop in oil prices has affected all of us in one way or another, but it is especially hurting the oil companies. Today, Standard Oil announced a national loss of $681 million for the second quarter of this year. Last year at the same time, Standard reported a profit of $390 million. President of Standard Alaska George Nelson says they anticipated this loss, which is why 120 people were laid off last week, and the budget in Alaska for operations and exploration has been reduced. And still to come on Channel 2 News, Mark Ayer is flying cargo for the Contras in Nicaragua. And local tourism officials are giving the summer mixed reviews. Tonight's closing gold and silver prices are brought to you by Deke International, offering one of the world's widest selections of foreign currencies and commission-free traveler's checks. Excuse me, did you know that light and lean ham not only tastes great, it's low in calories? What? No way. Uh, Forget it. Oh, come on. You gotta be kidding. I don't believe it. No way. Uh, come on. You can't Give me a break. Nah. What's that? Uh-oh. Believe it. Oh, for sure. I'd agree with that. You bet. Oh, of course. Okay. <laughs> Never doubted it. You betcha. I'm with you, big guy. <laughs> light and lean ham and ham lunch meat from Hormel. Big taste. <laughs> Little calories. Believe it. Mark Air. Their advertisements say there's something special in the air. 
Well, the Anchorage-based air carrier has been making special flights into Central America to help the CIA-backed Nicaraguan Contras. The cargo shipments, seven in all so far, were part of a $27 million aid package approved by Congress. Neil Burke, owner of Mark Air, says his planes took the cargo to a Contra military base in Honduras. The National Transportation Safety Board is considering launching a special study to look into air safety in the state of Alaska. In the past few years, the number of crashes involving commuter air carriers has been skyrocketing. The number of crashes, which include these carriers, is up over 100% in the last two years. Dr. John Lauber, a board member with the NTSB, says gov the government agency is very concerned with Alaska's high accident rate. Uh, based on a, you know, an overall impression of the accident rates and the kinds of accidents that are happening, uh, I think it's clear that among other issues and areas that we'll want to look at uh, are uh, questions having to do with pilot training and pilot experience and how that relates to the kinds of accidents that, uh, that we're seeing. Besides pilot training and operations, the NTSB says their proposed study would take a good look at airline management. The Fairbanks Pioneer Home has been put on notice that it has serious health and safety problems. The state has granted the Fairbanks home a six-month provisional license. The state health department says the home is understaffed and its rooms are too small. State officials say the Pioneer home is making progress and can use this health report to get changes made. Incidentally, the Anchorage Pioneer home has been granted a full one-year license. And John Hernandez joins us now with sports. We keep talking about budget cuts in the news, state workers and such. It's also affecting yes, school sports. Yes, unfortunately, it does affect the schools and the schools mean sports and it looks like it could be a major problem here. Of course, Governor Bill Sheffield is asking all educational agencies to make 10% budget cuts. That means over $10 million for the Anchorage School District. One of the possible, possible targets, all after school activities, as in sports, football, basketball, volleyball, et cetera, et cetera. Ed Nash is with the Alaska School Activities Association. He's here with us in the studio. Now, Ed, they are talking about wholesale cuts is it a smoke screen or is it a real possibility that all sports may be eliminated? The school district, John, has to look at all possibilities. There is no smoke screen about the cut. What is the impact of that possible cut on a district like the Anchorage School District? Well, it's a very major impact. They have over 3,200 students that participate, individuals that participate in activities. And they have to think very clearly what those students are going to do if there are not activities to participate in. Now you oversee sports and school activities all over the state. Is there a similar impact around the rest of Alaska? Every district in the state is going through the same thing. I met with 42 superintendents on Wednesday and Thursday in Juneau, and they discussed the very same thing. And not one, though, has at this point any inclination to cut all activities. Is it a bad idea in your mind? to make wholesale well, cuts. Maybe I'm biased, but yes, I think it's a very bad idea because the history, uh, Alaska's not new to this. The cuts have been taking place for 10 years uh, in the lower 48. And every time they've cut it, they find that the dropout rate goes up, the vandalism goes up, the drug usage goes up. And those are things we don't want to happen to the students in this state. Okay, Ed Nash, thank you very much. We should know more about this on Monday when the school district meets. Seems like there's been a steady diet of sports in the courts lately. Today, indictments in the Len Bias case, acquittals in that Minnesota basketball rape case, and a preliminary hearing for two New York Mets. As far as the Bias case goes, the indictments are sealed, but sources say Brian Tribble is charged with distribution of drugs. Bias's teammates, Terry Long and David Gregg, said to be facing possession charges. In Madison, Wisconsin, former gopher Mitch Lee is one of three men acquitted of rape. So were a couple of teammates, George Williams here and Ken Kevin Smith. Their accuser's testimony swayed the jury in their favor. In Houston, New York Mets Ron Darling and Tim Tuffle showed up for a hearing. That was in regards to a scuffle last Saturday in a Houston bar. Just one person, an off-duty police officer, testified, and the judge sent the case to the grand jury. Now, there is a full schedule tonight in the majors. We will have all the scores at 10 o'clock tonight. There are three games scheduled in the Alaska League. Oilers and Bucks are supposed to play at Mulcahy. The chances don't look good. Word is the weather is not wet yet in Palmer. Pilots and Miners scheduled there. And the Palouse Empire Cougars play up in Fairbanks. 
Got to figure it's the end of the line for Joe Theismann. He failed his preseason physical, and today the Redskins put him on waivers. Theismann is not fully recovered from that gruesome broken leg he suffered last fall. I'm sure you remember it. Here it is one more time. The Redskins wanted him to retire, but by going on waivers, Theismann picks up $65,000 in injury money. His medical bills are paid for the next year. Robin Grawl made a big name for herself playing basketball for UAA last season, but as John Carpenter reports, she is not a one-sport woman. On the basketball court, Robin Grawl is one of the best there is. And when she trades a basketball for a soccer ball, Grawl doesn't lose a thing. A superb athlete, soccer for Grawl is just another way to stay in shape. Especially during the summer, I'd like to keep in shape for basketball, and this seemed like a good way to do it. Grawl plays center midfielder for the Yukon Kickers. Currently, she leads the team in assists and is second in scoring. Her coach, Dick Hanlon, has become quite a Robin Grawl fan. She's an aggressive player, but at the same time, she's a finesse player. She has uh, uh, the right amount of speed where she can uh, defend. At the same time, she can turn it on and, and turn a breakaway into a goal. Right now, Grawl has helped the Kickers become a legitimate contender for the Anchorage Women's Soccer League title. But to Hanlon, she's done even more. I think more than anything, she's strengthened the Anchorage Women's Soccer League. She's made the whole league a, a much better team because she's given us a dimension of soccer that women's soccer hasn't seen up here for a while. John Carpenter, Channel 2 News. American Greg Lamont, another day closer to winning the Tour de France. He did not win today's 21st stage, but he's got a lead that at this point looks to be unbeatable. The Tour ends Sunday in Paris. Maria and John, that's it for now. Of course, that would be history making. Greg mm -hmm. Lamont would be the first American to win the Tour. How long has it been going on now? The Tour is about, oh, three weeks. Seems long, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it is a long, grueling, sometimes gruesome event. Better them uh, than us. Right. Thanks, John. And still to come tonight, a reunion of sorts above Anchorage. The Ketchum family welcomes you to the real Alaska. Ketch, Marguerite, and Craig Ketchum have welcomed many, many visitors over the years to the unique wilderness experiences. Breathtaking aerial vistas of Mount McKinley or of the mighty Columbia Glacier. We have learned from years of float plane flying where to expect to see wildlife, where to go for a relaxing river float trip, and where to find some of the finest fishing, river floating, and hunting in Alaska. Stay at fully equipped cabins, lodges, or secluded tent camps. Get away from the roads and crowds. Ketchum Air Service at Lake Hood, 243-5525. This weekend only, 99 cents delivers anything to your home at Color Time, America's largest rent-to-own system. That's right, only 99 cents pays your first week's rental on VCRs, color TVs, stereos, and home entertainment centers. Just 99 cents delivers washers and dryers, refrigerators, and freezers. At Color Time, there's no credit required. Immediate delivery and brand name products. Get what you want at Color Time. 99 cents delivers this Saturday and Sunday only. Free Coke and hot dogs courtesy of Coca-Cola and Color Time. Open 10 to 8 both days. 28 people have been killed in boating accidents around the state so far this year. The latest fatality came yesterday. 51-year-old Harlan Essink of Virginia is believed to have drowned in a rafting accident on the Nanana River. Essink was with a group of seven people being taken down the Cable Rapids by the Denali Raft Adventure Company when that raft overturned. No one else was injured. This summer's tourist season is getting mixed reviews. Alaska was supposed to experience a banner year for tourism due to terrorism in Europe and falling gas prices at home. But some tour companies and state officials were expecting tourism to jump by as much as 15% this summer. But by the end of this summer season, Anchorage may actually see much, much less. Well, I think we, we uh, tend as an industry to overreact to things. Maybe all industries do. At that time, you could tell there were some people just talking to each other. You know, and the more they heard it from each other, the more it became the truth. By the end of the summer, more than 500,000 tourists will have visited Anchorage. That's about 40,000 more than last summer, an overall increase of only about 8%. And a sudden increase in teen runaways has led to an increase in runaway shelters, which in turn has led to a need for more volunteers and household items to keep the centers running. Last year, just five beds were available for runaways. That number has just risen to 27. The homes need everything from beds to major household appliances to kitchen utensils. Shelter coordinator Lionel Jones says with winter on its way, it's now important to keep the kids off the street. 